Hello folks. Welcome back to the off-grid cabin out here at St. Bernard Acres. Today we're going to talk about solar power and how simple it really is. So hang around. things at first that I've noticed um, there's a ton of channels on solar power and there's two common themes to it you've got the one type that do a video and make everything sound so over complicated like you can't possibly do this on your own you know they don't explain it easy enough for people normal people to understand or you have the kind who's had everything done for them so when they're trying to explain what it is they have no clue what they're talking about so it doesn't come across to the viewer what they're actually saying because they don't know i'm going to try to do a real simple one of a, a an inexpensive system that i've put in this cabin and by inexpensive, I mean, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of, of components here. But, you know, it runs my cabin just fine. It runs my mini fridge all night long. During the day, if it's sunny out, it'll run my air conditioner. You know, it, it's not just a car battery. I mean, it's a system that will run a few things. I'm not going to go through all of the brand names and what these kinds these are because that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to explain to you in simplified terms the basics of how solar power works. If I had the talent, I would have little graphics and cartoon characters and things, but we're not getting into that. What I've got are four solar panels out in the yard, 250 watts each. And I've got a cat in here that has to get in the middle of it. I've got 4, 000, or four 250 watt solar panels out there for a total of a thousand watts of solar. That's all I have. And what that does, you know, I've got the, the four solar panels, I've got a charge controller, I've got an inverter, and I've got a battery bank out behind the cabin with six Walmart deep cycle batteries in it. Now mind you, it's been 18 months I've had this thing up and running, and it's running just fine. I've had zero problems, so don't start telling me how cheap this is, or this doesn't work, or you got to do that. I'm just showing you the basics here. Those solar panels, when the light comes up, and light starts hitting them, all these little electrons in there get excited. And they all start bouncing around and moving around in there, because they want to get out of that solar panel. And it runs through a wire that comes all the way from the yard under the cabin up into here, up into a fuse box. I got a fuse box on here, but it goes into this charge controller. And when those excited little electrons, we'll call them watts, just for no, no, nothing better to call them, they get excited, they start running through that wire to come up here to this charge controller. This is like the command center for the battery. Is what this is the, and wire size people say oh you got to have certain size wire size and it's true because what happens is as the Sun comes up more and you get more light more electrons are produced more watts are trying to run through that wire and they fall off you know because it's not big enough to carry all of them so that's why you think about bigger size wire for certain parts of it and I've got other videos up there, and 12,852 other people have videos explaining how to wire up solar panels in series and uh, parallel and all those kind of things. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just telling you that it's producing a few hundred of these little watt guys, and they're running through that wire trying to get to here. Well, this box looks at it. 
looks at the batteries to see what condition the batteries are in. And by condition of the batteries, how many watts are inside the batteries already? That's what this thing does. Because if you try to stuff too many watts in those batteries, it burns it up because it can't handle it. So this brain here knows how many watts are in the batteries. And as all those little guys are running into this box, it says, okay, it's morning time. The batteries are low. So everybody jumps into the batteries right now. As that charge comes up in the batteries, this charge controller says, okay, we don't need as many. So some of you guys, we're directing out. We don't want you to stay back. That's how this works. Solar panels to the charge controller. The charge controller determines how many watts it needs coming in to go to those batteries to keep those batteries fully charged. That's all that this, this does. That's it. That's how simple it is. All these wires and fuses and cutoff switches, those are important, but they're not important to this video. So, wires from the solar panels to the charge controllers to the batteries. That's how you charge your batteries. The solar panels produce the electricity. Sends it through the wires to this. This sends the electricity to the batteries. The batteries store it until you need to use it. That's how you charge your solar batteries. That's all there is to it. Now, in order to get the lights on, to run my refrigerator, I have to take the electricity from that battery bank and send it to these devices. So, they've jumped in here, the controller says, you go to the batteries, the rest of you go back. We don't need you. Now, coming out of the batteries, I've got more wires. Those wires come out of the battery into this inverter. So all those watts have now left the battery. They've run to this inverter. The reason I need an inverter is, so far, we're dealing with all direct current. These are one-way watts. They run to the end of their run, and they're done. They jump off, and it's over with. Your household runs on alternating current not direct current, which simply means all those little watt guys run to whatever device where it's needed, drop off their charge and run all the way back to pick up more and head back out again. I can't make it any simpler than that. The direct current, the DC voltage that's coming out of the batteries comes up to this inverter. The inverter turns it into alternating current and sends it on its way. That's all the inverter does. Right? And it is smart enough to know that, okay, you only have X number of watts left in your batteries. We don't want to over uh, uh, use them. We don't want them to get too low. So it will stop it at a certain point. And it won't send any more out. And you get warnings. You know, It tells you everything. So that's a solar system. Solar panels charge controller, batteries, inverter. That's it. That's what makes solar power work. All this other stuff, you know, it's just accessories you need to make it all work, kind of. You know, I wouldn't have to do all this if I didn't want to. This is just safer. When I had this solar system set up in the RV, when I first started experimenting with solar, I just had the two little batteries, two little panels. I didn't have all of this stuff. I didn't use any power overnight because nobody was here. All it did was keep the refrigerator running. That doesn't use much at all. So when the sun come, came out, when light came out, there is no sun. We're not going to see sun for a while. But it doesn't have to have sun. It's charging. I've got power coming in now. And it's so overcast and gloomy out there, practically raining. But I'm still getting a charge. So it doesn't. it's not like, you know... It doesn't work without sun. Now I'm only getting, let's say those are a thousand watt panels. I'm only getting a hundred of them running over here now. Because that's all that's getting excited by that little bit of light that there is. If, the, if it was full sun and the sun was up high and beating down on it, I might get 900 of those guys running over here. Then what this does, you know, again, it sees it. Oh, those batteries are completely full. So it just sends a few of them over just to keep what's called a trickle charge, a float. 
You know, it already did its job. It charged them back up completely. Now it's just floating. That's how simple solar power is. That's how easy it is to work with solar power. Research it. Learn what different wire sizes mean, what different volts, amps, watts. I have videos on that stuff. They're in the playlist of solar projects that explains it in common English, you know, common folk talk. Uh, nothing technical about my stuff, I'm telling you. But for all the grief I heard about, oh, that's cheap, you can't do it that way, you got to have lithium batteries, you know. My six batteries were 100 bucks a piece. So, you know, that's why I went that direction. And this cabin, for what I do, what I've learned now, I only needed four. Four would do exactly the same. I just have plenty of spare. If I'm out here for the weekend, we want to watch TV and a DVD or whatever. I have plenty of battery power for it at night. But that's a solar system. That's how easy one works. Don't be afraid of it. Don't let people scare you or tell you you can't do it. Because you can. Anybody can do this. A little bit of research. You know, pick whatever product and price range you're comfortable with. You know, when I first did this, I put a 2,000 watt inverter. Because everybody's, oh, I got a 5,000 watt inverter. I got, you know, 10,000 watt inverter. You don't have enough battery to produce that much anyway. You don't have enough solar to produce that. So why buy a huge inverter? You know, this 1,200 watt inverter. It's bigger than what I need, you know, but it's, I can use it in the future. The 2,000 watt inverter I got originally for this system, I sold because I just don't need that much, you know. I have an 80 amp charge controller for 20 amps worth of solar power panels. I didn't know, but I'm going to add to that maybe. I mean, there's room for this to expand if I wanted to, but learn about stuff like that. You don't need all of the big giant numbers because a 5,000 watt inverter I will never ever be able to produce enough energy to use that you know that's what people don't think about when they start buying these things solar power is not the end-all be-all trust me it's not cheap to do this on a bigger scale this is a cabin we use on weekends it's fine for that you know to do my house in Wheeling and run everything in my house to run the way it does now, being connected to the grid, you're looking at probably sixty to eighty thousand dollars for a solar system. There's no way that pays for itself. I don't care what they say; they'll try to sell you on all this crap. But it'll pay for itself in X number of years. It's never going to pay back eighty thousand dollars. Plain and simple. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. How easy this is. You can do it. A nice little inexpensive system and you know, I would not run to Harbor Freight and pay hundred nine dollars for their 45 watt solar system because that doesn't you know that'll charge your cell phone for you that's about what that's good for you know do some research watch some other videos don't watch just mine because I've watched other videos that's how I learned but it ain't scary and it ain't hard and it ain't that expensive if you think about it we have a comfortable cabin with electric in it. And I spent $2,000. But I hope you all like this. I hope you share it. Make sure you share this with people. Because this, you know, this is a good video. I'm, I can tell already. I haven't even edited it yet. And I like it. Uh, share this one with people that are thinking about solar. Let them know. Don't be afraid of it. It's not easy. It's not going to replace everything you've got. You know, I told you what I do with my little... 1,000 watt system that costs $2,000. You know what I do with it? During the day, when that sun is bright, and I got 800 watts running through that line, that air conditioner up there only uses 550 watts. My batteries are fully charged. I've got all that extra watts running through these lines. So what if this charge controller knows to do is to send it directly over. Just bypass the batteries, send all that wattage over, to the inverter and let it run that air conditioner and it won't even touch those batteries. So those are the kind of things to think about, you know. And as soon as I get this moved, this inverter is going to be wired into my service panel. So it'll run all my electrical outlets and everything. I have a generator that's wired into this. If I didn't have the battery power, 
I can start the generator, it will run everything and charge the batteries while it's running. So there are all kinds of ways, you know, you, you think about to help yourself. But that's how easy it is. <laughs> that's all I got to say. This is, uh, what, January 2nd. I have to go to work tomorrow. It's my last video for a while because i got to start a full-time job tomorrow. But uh, remember to like, share, comment, do all those kind of things. If you are subscribed, thank you. If you're not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I got some more merchandise down in the bottom. Uh, I got creamer on some shirts and cups if you want him, along with updated stuff with Max. And uh, my P.O. box and all that's down there going to help support this project out here. This is Joe out here at the off-grid cabin. God bless you all. God bless America. I'm out.